ಅನುದಿನ ಅನುಕ್ಷಣ ಮನೆಯಲ್ಲೂ ಕಲಿಯೋಣ ಕಲಿಕೆಯ ಹೊಸ ಹಾದಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಜೊತೆಗೂಡಿ ಹೆಜ್ಜೆಯ ಹಾಕೋಣ ಸಂತಸದಿ ಕಲಿಯೋಣ ನಮ್ಮ ಹೆಮ್ಮೆಯಾಯಿ ಕ್ಲಾಸಿನಲ್ಲಿ ಎಸ್ ಎಸ್ ಟೀಚರ್ ಮ್ಯಾಮ್ Hi hello namaste everyone how are you all hope all are fine and happy at home taking all necessary precautions that's good come on let me welcome you all to this english class why to waste the time without wasting our time come on let's begin our session take out your textbook pen pencil writing materials yes once again let me welcome you all to this english class and today's session is about the lesson sandalwood trees that is second session for class 8th standard yes as i told you that the lesson is about that's good sandalwood trees before begin my lesson sandalwood trees my dear students i just want to tell you something very very interesting and very very important I just want you people to just observe this screen. Yes, this is about motivational quote. Yes, I want you to get that motivation. I want you to get that positive energy before begin to read our lesson. I want you to observe this one. Yes, the motivational quote is like this. Past is experience, present is experiment, future is expectation. Am I right everyone? Obviously everybody are following these things past present and future that means past is experience present is experiment future is expectation so use your experience in your experiment in order to reach your expectation yes let me tell you once again very quickly past present future experience experiment expectation use your experience in your experiment in order to reach your expectation my dear students hope these things have understood by you fine so let's begin our today's session as i told you that today we are going to discuss about the second lesson that is sandalwood trees before begin the lesson let us recall yes what have you we have studied in our previous session if you just observe we have studied about deforestation what are the causes and effects of deforestation and above all we have studied about a wonderful story about a girl by name called sunanda yes it is a story about a brave little girl sunanda who lost her parents at the same time she has lost her eyesight though she has lost her parents and even her eyes she has bravely fought against that is cutting down of sandalwood trees if you just recall the story that what we have discussed in our previous session we have studied that this particular little girl sunanda who has fought bravely against to stop that is about cutting down of sandalwood trees at the same time just remember my dear students even we have taken a oath yes that we have to protect our environment we have to protect our surroundings we have to protect our generation yes that is what the story that we have studied in our previous session that is complete story of the lesson sandalwood trees now in our today's session let us begin home assignment just recall my dear students that what have uh, and what have given the assignment in my previous session shall we quickly see the home assignment hope you have also done it very done it in your own way that's good yes i want you to see the screen here if you just observe the question and answers yes obviously after reading the lesson we have to answer all these questions and remember these questions have, are going to ask in your examination for one mark or maybe for two mark 
Hope you are following the points. That's good. If you just see the point, if you see the question here. First question, where did Sunanda live? Where did Sunanda live? The answer is, Sunanda lived near, near Karimunai village in the eastern ghats with her parents. Just recall the session everyone. In our previous session we have discussed that a family used to live in a Karimunai village and her father is a landlord and even her mother used to look after some of the things and they were settled very well and there was a happy family. And all of a sudden there was a big explosion. Hope you have remembered that particular uh, uh, part of the lesson that we have discussed in our previous session. So on that note, the question is, where did Sunanda live? Sunanda lived near Karimunai village in eastern Ghats with her parents. See the second one. Who looked after Sunanda when she lost her parents? Yes, this is a very interesting uh, question. So who looked after Sunanda means here, Rav Garu. The headmaster of the village looked after Sunanda when she lost her parents. Hope you have remembered when there was a big explosion, everybody were passed away and even the girl Sunanda has lost her eyesight and she has been accompanied with only one thing, only one uh, person or you can say only one animal, which was that? Yes, the dog, that is Gugu the dog. Hope you have remembered that one. That's good. Fine. Let's go to the third question. Why are trees cut down by man? Lovely question, no? Why are trees cut down by man? If you see the answer, trees are cut down by man for various reasons. That is for industrial development, that is for cultivation, even we can write many more. Yes, we can give number of reasons why the trees have been cut down by the man. After that, if you see the next question, what did Sunanda hear in the forest at night? Yes, what did Sunanda heard or hear in the forest at night? Remember, yes, she has heard, she has heard that there was a, there was a discussion between the people. That is, remember, 10 percentage of money you earn by selling the sandalwood trees is mine, said by Mudalir. Yes, one fine day. Uh, just recall the uh, lesson that we have discussed, my dear students. So, at one point of time that we have discussed, uh, no, like when Sunanda had been to the forest and she was just sitting somewhere in a forest area and she heard some noises over there and some people were talking among themselves. At that point of th time, she heard the Mudalir, that is police head constable, he used to no, no, talking to someone else over there. Remember, 10% of the money you earn by selling this sandalwood trees is mine, said by Mudalir, are the words heard by Sunanda. That is the answer. If you just observe the textbook, you can able to make out. And the next question is, why did Sunanda have to go to Utkamand? Yes. So, in, in the lesson we have come across, there is a headquarters over there. Yes? Yes. So, what did, why did Sunanda have to go to Utkamand. Sunanda went to the police headquarters at Utkamand in order to file a complaint. Mainly, she went to the police headquarters in order to file a complaint against illegal cutting down of sandalwood trees. What is that? Illegal cutting down of a sandalwood trees. That was the highlighted point of this lesson. Though she has lost her eyesight, she, has, she is brave girl that she has took this particular issue to the police headquarters in order to file a complaint against illegal cutting down of trees. That is the point you have to remember everyone. Hope you have understood these answers. And the last one. Where did Rao Garu want to admit Sunanda? Hope you have remembered the name Rao Garu. He is the headmaster. He is the headmaster of the village school. That's good. So at last we come to know that Rav Garu want to admit Sunanda in one of the schools. That is National School for Blind. Yes, if you just observe those particular lines in the last page of the lesson, you will be able to understand. Yes, at last it has been mentioned the headmaster of the school Rav Garu wanted Sunanda to join National School for the Blind. Yes, that is the answer for all these questions. Hope you have understood these things. Let's go to the next one. Yes, again if you turn the page in your textbook, uh, there are some questions about reference to context. If you just see the heading over here, 
read the following extracts. So, in, uh, once you go to 10th standard, so there you will come across about like a reference to context, like who said to whom. Generally, you might be knowing this one. Yes, here, read the following extracts and answer the questions that follow. Shall we see the questions, everyone? Yes. Open your textbook and see these questions. Yes, there are some two set of questions. The first one is, I am so different from the other girls now. Let me read the question. I am so different from the other girls now. The question is, who said this? Obviously, Sunanda said this. Why is the speaker different? The speaker is different because she is blind. Yes, she has lost her eyesight because of the big explosion. When was it said? Yes, when was it said? When Rao Garu wanted to send her back to school. See these consequences. If you see the textbook, you can able to understand. That's what you need to observe over here. So, these are the three set of questions. Who said this? Why is the speaker? And when was it? So, of course, you got the answer for these questions. See the second one. He says, no one can break a single twig. He says, no one can break a sing single twig. Twig. So, at one point of uh, uh, explanation, I said about this particular uh, consequence. So, who does he refers to? He refers to the mudal ear, that is police constable who is working in a police station and uh, once this uh, issue has been taken to him, he said, no one can break a single twig. So, that is what he refers to mudal ear. To whom was this said? This was said to Rao Garu. Rao Garu, the headmaster of the village school. Why did he say so? He said because there was a news about, there was a news about more and more sandalwood trees have been cut. Yes, when Sunanda came to know that there were more and more number of sandalwood trees have been cut, she took this issue to the Rao Garu, sorry, she took this issue to the Mudalir in the beginning. Then this was the consequence that we have come across in the textbook. So, hope you have understood the answer for these two questions. I want you to take a textbook or just turn the page, observe these questions and note down the answers. Is that clear my dear students? That's good. So, always remember the comprehension questions and reference to context you will get in your examination. So, observe the answers. So, quickly let us go to the next uh, vocabulary part. These are very, very interesting and very important. All these related to the grammar one. If you just observe here vocabulary and I want you to open a page number 12. In page number 12, you have a questions about vocabulary and that is about prefixes. My dear students, let me tell you, you will get a question about suffix and prefix in your annual examination. Even this part is also going to help you in your 10th standard also. So, before going to the examples, I have given a definition for the word prefix. Just observe this one. What is prefix and what is suffix? Let us know the definition first. If you observe the sentence over there, prefix means a letter or a group of letters. A letter or a group of letters added at the beginning of the root word. Where it has been added? At the beginning of the root word. Beginning of the root word is called as prefix. So, in, in, a, in a simple way we can say that when a letter or a group of letters added at the beginning of a root word is called as prefix. At the end of the root word is called as suffix. That's all. If you just observe these examples, my dear students, you will be uh, able to understand in, in, in a very easy way. Always remember, so add an, in, this, ill, I am, im to form the opposites of the following words. It's in, in one way, prefix are something like an opposites. If you just observe these examples, you can able to understand. Right? So, for that, at least you, you, should, you should remember the definition of prefix. Let me repeat quickly, a letter or group of letters added at the beginning of the root word is called as prefix. At the beginning of the root word, which is the root word? If you just observe these examples, you can able to understand. See the first example, which is the root word? Legal. For that, what we have added? Illegal. Legal is the root word. We have added I-L at the beginning of the root word. That is why it is called as prefix. I hope you have understood the meaning over here. That's good. 
Are you all uh, able, able to follow the answers over here everyone? That's good. Fine. Second one is comfort. Comfort is a root word. We have added D-I-S to the root word. So it has become discomfort. Yes, remember, it's, 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 it's so clearly. D-I-S is added at the beginning of the root word. So it is called as discomfort. Like that, the third one is curable. Curable is a root word. We have added I-N at the beginning of the root word. So it is called as incurable. Like that, study, unstudy, possible, impossible. See here I want to say, possible is a root word, we have added I am, that is I am to the root word, so it has become impossible. But let me tell you, this word is very interesting now, my dear students, the word impossible is really, really interesting, especially for me. Why? Because I have observed something uh, different and unique thing in this one. The word, the word impossible says I am possible. How nice, na? See, that's what the word, root word is possible. I am is added to the root word. So, it has become impossible. That is opposite, negative, fine. Though the word impossible is in negative, but it gives a positive meaning. When you split and read it very carefully. That is what I said. This particular word is so interesting. Like how? When you split it, when you divide it, when you separate it, it says that the word impossible says, I am possible. How nice, na? Good. So like that we can add up number of examples, my dear students. If you say regular, irregular, fortunate, unfortunate, fortune, misfortune, able, unable. Like this you can write number of prefixes by adding these words or group of letters to the root word. All that I want to say is that this particular chapter is very very important. Observe the root word, add the letters or group of letters in order to make a prefix. It is quite similar to suffix also. In case of suffix, if I say the word called jump and I am going to add ing for the root word that is jump ink. So that is suffix. So all together what I want to tell you is that when I add a group of letters or a letter at the beginning of the root word means it is prefix at the ending of the root word is called as suffix hope you have understood the concept over here that's good let's go to the next one yes if you just open in, uh, again in page number i think uh, thir uh, 13 in your page in, uh, open your textbook page number 13 uh, in which you have a question about genders yes so, these are all the basic concepts, my dear students, you have to remember always. Yes, if you see the definition of a gender, gender is used to describe the characteristics of a man and a woman that are socially constructed. How nice, na? At the same time, we have types of gender. They are masculine gender, neuter gender, feminine gender and common gender. Hope you, these things you have studied in your previous, I think you uh, know when you are in 5th, uh, 6th and all, uh, no, you have learned all these things, that's great. Uh, again, let us recall uh, the concept of gender. Uh, the types of genders are masculine, feminine, neuter and common. Example, if you just see the examples like this, uh, that is man, we have, we have to say woman, father, mother, uncle, aunt, sir, Madam, headmaster, headmistress, husband, wife. So I think these are all very easy to write the answers, right? Yes then. Take out your textbook and open page number 13, my dear students. See, there are a number of questions about this particular chapter called genders. Take a pencil and write down the answers there only. Just see the screen. Take a pencil, observe the screen and write the answers. That's all. Your answer is ready. Yes, these questions are there in your uh, textbook in page number 13. Are you all following this one? Hope you have understood the answers. That's great. Let me recall the answers quickly. The examples they have given here. Father, that is, the gender is mother. Uncle, aunt. Sir, madam. Headmaster, headmistress. A husband and a wife. Fine. So, this is uh, uh, no, the answer for these questions uh, in your page number 13 your textbook okay fine let's go to the next one yeah very interesting again come back to the page number 12 in which they have given a small exercise where you are supposed to underline the two words which have a same meaning 
or near my meaning. What does it mean? Hope you have heard the word called synonyms. Synonyms and antonyms. Yes, similar meaning. So, underline the word, underline the two words which have the same or near my same meaning. If you just observe these particular questions. See, they have given around like um, five words. Out of five words, the two words are similar in their meaning. Yes, hope you are all uh, following the points everyone. Let me tell you again, open your textbook in page number 12, these questions are there. Yes, you, if you want you can just take the answers also. In page number 12, they have given about the exercise where you are supposed to underline the two words which are having a same or similar meaning. See the first one, buy, receive, purchase, desire, reward, all these are the words. All these are the five words. Out of five words, the two words are having the same meaning. Can you guess? Of course, I have already underlined the answers. You can easily make out. Yes, the answers are buy and purchase. We buy, we purchase many more things in the market. We go to market to buy or to purchase so many materials. Right? That's what. Buy and purchase are the two words which are having the same Meaning. If you want, you can just underline like this also. That's good. Yes, second one, learn, remember, memory, recollect, recite. So here, remember, recollect. Both are having same meaning. In the third one, clean, gather, create, arrange, collect. Gather and collect. Gather and collect. That is a similar meaning. In the fourth one, easy, cheat, false, Confuse, incorrect. False and incorrect, both are same. False, incorrect, both are having a similar meaning. In the fifth one, show, describe, reveal, order. Show and reveal are the two words which are having a similar meaning. Hope you got the answer for all these five questions everyone. That's good. Quickly, let's go to the next one. Again, in page number 14, they have given about a language activity in which you are supposed to frame, in which you are supposed to make a noun form by using or by adding ty or y. Before all, I said about suffix and prefix. Hope you have remembered that one. A letter or group of letters added at the beginning means prefix, at the end means suffix. If you just observe these examples, see here, the root word is honest. We, had, we have made it as honesty by adding a letter Y. Very easy. Equal, equality. Active, activity. Weak, weakness. Here the word weak is root word. For that we have added N-E-S-S. -S, weakness. Right? Fine. Able, ability. So observe these things. What we have added at the end of the root word. Why? T-Y and -E -S -S. So, this is what the thing we need to observe. So, when we add these things, it has become noun form. Make nouns from the word given below by adding N -E -S -S or I-T-Y or Y. That is the heading. Observe these answers quickly and write down. Honest, honesty, equal, equality, active, activity, weak, weakness, able, ability. That's good. Let's go to the next one. Yes, this is very interesting. In page number 15, again, they have given some pictures. Observe these pictures and you are supposed to write one another or each other. They have given an example. The books are distributed among one another. Ramu and Sonu to, uh, took care of each other. Like that, the brothers had a strong dislike for one another. True religion teaches us to love one another. At the same time, Karan and Arjun hated each other. We must always help each other. Observe one another and each other. When there are two persons or two things to be saved, when we, at that time we use each other. If you see the last example, we must help each other. Karan and Arjun hate each other. So, the brothers had a strong dislike for one another. So, this is the thing that we need to observe and we need to answer these questions. Fine. So, go to the next one. Yes, again in page number 16, we have a very interesting activity in your textbook. Just observe. Study the following words carefully that stands for a group or collection of something. What does it indicate? This indicates that this is a collective noun. 
Hope, I think uh, if you have remembered when in our previous session we have discussed about noun, that is concrete noun, yes, abstract noun, common noun, material noun, yes, that's good, collective noun, countable noun, uncountable noun. So, all these types of nouns, under that we have a beautiful chapter, one of the interesting chapters that is about, that is about, see there, a group which indicates that is collective noun a cluster of trees an army of soldiers a class of students so fill in the blanks with most appropriate words from the given below they have given these words in the bracket observe open page number 16 and observe this one and for that I have given number of pictures so if you observe this picture you can able to make out a fleet of ships ships see if you just observe this one ships right fleet of ships and the second one is a library of books that's good, library, that is collective noun. A shower of rain, if you just observe, rain, a shower of rain. Next one, a team of players, if you just observe this beautiful picture, a team of players, group, and a collection of stamps. Interesting, right now? That's good. Like that, a bunch of keys, bunch of keys, collective noun, bunch of keys, a pair of shoes, and a heap of stone. Yes, all these are under uh, uh, the answer for these questions and one more uh, exercises quickly you just observe choose the correct word given in a bracket to complete each sentence the first one is Anand can you see dash the words are in that one yourself or himself Anand can you see yourself is the answer the answers are there below just observe Elise and her friend danced together in the bracket they have given her and she so remember her friend next dash are teachers of our school this are teachers or these are teachers these are teachers of our school the answer is these the fourth one dash of the girls is Am amla that is which of these girls or which of the girls is amla that is the thing that we need to understand and the fifth one is dash is your book this is your book or that is your book right so this and that demonstrative pronoun this that these those so hope you have remembered these words that is your book when generally we say and the sixth one is that car belongs to them that car belongs to them this car belongs to him generally we say like that okay that's great so these are the pronouns that we have uh, absorbed the answers in this particular uh, uh, exercise uh, that is d that is choose the correct word given in a bracket to complete each sentence so at last use suitable question words of course like we have uh, question words if you just observe the things that so when is your birthday how old are you and who are you what do you want so where is your house where are you going with whom are you going uh, then whose pen is this so that is the thing we need to observe when we use the wh word called whose pen is this after wh that is subject then the verb but for the other uh, WH words, it will be a little different. Observe these WH words. Okay. Yes, that's all. And at last, let us uh, uh, observe the home assignment. Answer the following questions in two or three sentences. There are some three questions. One is, how did Sunanda lose her eyesight? What was happening in the forest? And how was Sunanda rewarded by the police department? For these questions, you have to observe or go through the textbooks and find the answers and write all the answers and show it to your uh, teacher. Okay, that's good. Hope you have all understood the lesson that is sandalwood trees and even the grammar part of this particular lesson. Uh, hope you just once again go through the textbook and write the answers and make a note of it and make a, a proper note and show it to our teacher. Okay, thank you everyone. And this is Mr. Rahman presented by Mr. Rahman Ali. Working as an English teacher, GHPS Budugumpa, Koppal District. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Yes, teacher. Yes, ma'am.